video llama. <laughs> Welcome back to Video Rama, your number one superstore, including laser discs now, where we take your request for a topic and give you our recommendations. We received a request from a dying, decrepit woman who is obviously suffering from dementia uh, last week, and asked she asked for a horror movie directed by a woman horror. with no nudity. I mean, what even is that? What's a woman with no nudity? Is she a never nude? A Barbie. She she stitched uh, into her clothes. Oh. No, Barbie's oh like she, she can get nudie. She just doesn't have anything there. She has no gender. <laughs> She's like a character from an anime, if I'm not mistaken. It depends on the anime. <laughs> oh. So uh yeah, my name is Linda, but as always you can call me the cheese, and this week I'm the cheese a duck. Oh. <laughs> or Elrond Cheezard. <sighs> I'm I'm just gonna be Adrian. I'm I'm still here. And as always, I'm Don Don the Hedgy. Don Johnson, awesome. <laughs> Don't you say Jesus? How can you always be the cheese when this is our second episode? <laughs> <laughs> well, because in every show, I'm the cheese. <laughs> that never changes. <sighs> My life, I'm the cheese. You're squeeze cheese. You're not Sometimes. even real. It's not even real. <laughs> Why can't you just be normal? But mom, what else isn't real? Anyway, so uh, this week we're covering my choice. That's right. Oh, that's so Take a look. It's Baba Duck on Video Rama. Video Rama. Oh, it's song time? <laughs> what the yes. shit is this? Do, do, ba, ba, do, do, <laughs> no, it's ba, like this. Ba, 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 do, ba, do, I'm going to squeeze a duke out of my baba. Now let's get some now. Fuck this thing. Shimmy to the left. Shimmy to the right. Shimmy to the left. That's what you do when you get a turd loose from your ass. You shimmy from one side to the other until that little nugget wiggles its way loose. A duck, if you will. Yes. Which is this movie. Highly disagree. I love this movie. It's a fucking yeah. classic. It's oh, brilliant awesome. in my mind. Uh, it is <laughs> the Baba Duck or Mister Duck to you. Yeah, that, that's yeah, that's Mister Baba Duke. It's said on the book, Mister. You will yeah. call him such. Yeah, they did gentrify him. They, they yep, did. Yep. Baba Duke. Oh, and oh, now oh. he's a very important icon of the LGBTQ uh, community. A forced icon, some, yes. Some, some, somehow. Um, not forced. Yeah. So, <laughs> it surprise, is forced, surprise. but it's not. Surprise. Surprise. Well, the question surprise, is, listeners, we completely all disagree on this movie. Absolutely. Yes. We were going to find out. <laughs> there are and, three parts of the compass to reach at one of them. Hmm. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, Tell it us it a was story. okay. I'll, are you ready for story time? <laughs> as long as it ain't saying, bitch. <laughs> Just tell us a story. Mommy, she wouldn't I believe I me. <laughs> I'll set up baby traps in your home. <laughs> okay, watch. I'm gonna smash Linda like. Eh, eh. <laughs> My friends in the middle of the road, bleeding to death. <laughs> See, I'm really glad that this didn't come out when we were kids, because Donnie would have gotten ideas for weapons to murder I me. I didn't <laughs> need ideas. <laughs> so anyway. Um, <laughs> Just for the record, snitches get stitches. You learn that. <laughs> I <Snitch guess>. life. <laughs> uh, so anywho, the, uh, okay, so uh, there's this woman, Amelia who, uh, on her way to the hospital to give birth to her son, Sam, uh, her husband, and she gets in, get into a really bad accident, and her husband gets decapitated in a really awesome, gnarly way. And... Which we don't see. Oh, you, you kind of see it. Like, in... Like, toward the end, Baba Duck's like, I'm your husband now. <laughs> and he's like, oh no, and my head go... And, uh, anywho, so, yeah, um, he obviously did not live through it, <laughs> and, uh, 
Uh, fast forward to seven years, and she has a problem being um, being close with her son and uh, affectionate with her son. And uh, she doesn't like to celebrate his birthday and uh, tries to, to share, basically kind of take over her niece's uh, birthday to celebrate Sam's birthday on her niece's birthday as well. Because, I, I mean, it makes sense if you think about it, because to celebrate on the day that he was born is also to celebrate on the day that she lost her husband. Mm. So... I always celebrate yeah, decapitations. Yeah. <laughs> Welcome Why to not? Video Rama, where we celebrate Selfish decapitations. <laughs> I'm like an Italian at Carnival in the 19th century. <laughs> <laughs> Don't lose your head. <laughs> um, anywho, so uh, they find a book in their house one night with that's very um, graphic and horrific. Uh, for children, uh, showing this monster called Mr. Babadook, who is basically terrorizing this little boy, who's, I guess, Sam. And uh, Sam is, like, he doesn't really sleep, and he's uh, not what you would call normal. Um, so he's like us, I guess. And he makes <laughs> improvised weapons to slay the monster under his bed. It's awesome. And yeah, he carries a weapon to school. Yeah, and he gets in trouble for bringing a dart gun yeah, that yeah, he made. He, he makes a bow that shoots darts. It's like yeah. a, out of like a piece of wooden furniture and some shit. And it really looks yeah. like some shit you'd couple together from the house. It's awesome. Now, Donnie, I believe like we, we were talking about it earlier. You mentioned a weapon that we were able to bring to school. <laughs> Why, yes, it seems like only a week ago I mentioned this. It was when you and I were in school and everyone was taking paper clips and bending the metal into compound bows, which we would then attach a rubber ah, band to, and then using uh, toothpicks for arrows and slinging them at each other. Oh, at my school, we didn't figure out the toothpicks. You guys were violent. Oh, We were <laughs> advanced. <laughs> yeah, that's it. <laughs> advanced so um yeah so he's really just trying to protect his mom which is really sweet if you think about it but also really sad because you know he's uh um, they don't have any friends or anything nobody likes him nobody likes him because he's different he's <laughs> different and, and nobody um, loves mom because she's extra special australian yeah, extra special Australian. They're all really this is what we call normal Australians. I <laughs> <laughs> think I'm joking. <laughs> she keeps She's saying oi, you know, drinking Fosters. And <laughs> Australian that's for beer. Yeah. Um, shout out to friend of the show, Yahoo Serious. <laughs> Our buddy. Not, not Bon Scott, fucking Yahoo Serious. <laughs> Yahoo serious. Um, but uh, anywho, so uh, Babadook, like, even though uh, Amelia, the mother, keeps trying to get rid of this book, the Babadook uh, book keeps coming back, and the Babadook is real. And, uh, yeah, it possesses her at some point, and uh, she tries to kill her son, and, yeah. Don't, don't forget <laughs> the most important kid. part. When, or when she when, kills when, the dog, when unfortunately. When Robin ducks in her, she kills the dog. Yeah, what the Yeah, fuck, I thought man. you were going to say when she's masturbating with a vibrator and he jumps on the bed. Like, Everybody does that. Can you imagine how fucking frustrating that would be? I mean, I'm sure every hit him with the butt end of a moment. dildo and tell him fuck off to La La Land. And then you just go back to clam jamming. Well, That's this all is, you this do. Is why, this is and why you have she to clean the dildo so he can sleep. I said the butt end of the dildo. And it's a vibrator <laughs> anyway. <laughs> so I ain't gonna do anything but up the settings. Uh, you guys are acting like there's only one kind of dildo. Come on, go to Bad Dragon. <laughs> there's so many bad, kinds. Bad Dragon is art. Okay, those <laughs> are artistic pieces. <laughs> Those are but, not for sex. It's a um, conversation starter. Never mind. Never mind why it looks like that. Never mind shout out to it. all of our uh, parent listeners out there. Because <laughs> I'm out sure to y'all know. Time friend of the show, Bad Dragon. <laughs> 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 
<laughs> one of our best Patreon supporters. <laughs> oh. Bad dragon, you out there? <laughs> so, anywho, uh, yeah, I mean, that's got to be frustrating as hell. Like, either, you know, you're about to nut or you're about to uh, to, to bust and, uh, you know, your kid comes in and it's like, son of a bitch. He's like, and apparently you when wrestling? you really have a kid, you can't actually look him in the eye and finish up. That's not allowed. <laughs> Somehow. <laughs> apparently I'm the jerk. <laughs> Well, you got in trouble with the law because you did that on a bus, but that's a different story. Yeah, we get <laughs> I don't know where I did, 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 did it. <laughs> like a ninja with that shit. You don't know. <sighs> so, anywho, um, yeah, it's the Babadook, and uh, written and directed by the amazing uh, Jennifer Kent, who uh, used to actually be a uh, a teacher. Jennifer uh, Kent. Yeah. See. What, is that why you selected this movie? Because Jennifer Kent identifies as female. And is this why she's awesome? <laughs> yes, this is why she's awesome. <laughs> yeah. did, oh. did, have you seen her <laughs> other mo- major motion pictures that she directed? I'm just well, asking. as I say, she yeah. uh, went to and eventually taught at NIDA, the National Institute of Dramatic Art. She was ahead of uh, Essie Davis, who played Amelia. And yep. taught Daniel Henshaw, who played Robbie, who's um, trying to get into uh, the family. Somebody going to get into these pants. Somebody going to get into these pants. These pants. There she studied and earned her degree in acting, but uh, she became no longer interested in acting and wanted to learn more about uh, directing films, making films. And uh, she didn't want to go back to school, so uh, instead of that, she actually uh, worked as an apprentice to Lars von Trier in the production of Dogville. Yeah. Yes, definitely yay. Yeah. And um, she uh, woo, she called uh, that time working on that the best film school, and. Uh, Really thought that Lars von Trier was quite genius, and I agree. She has only directed two feature films, and then yes, she and Lars von Trier and got some aluminum bats, and and uh, they drove over by Larry Clark's house, and they smashed his mailbox, and yeah, then, yeah, then they threw a brick through his window and made him um, cry. But this was based on a short film of hers called Monster, which you can find on YouTube, and uh, it's basically the same same premise. Which uh, supposedly she got because one of her friends uh, was a single mother and her son was being plagued by uh, by a monster he thought was real. Nightmare. Yeah. And the only way that her uh, that his mother could stop it being such a problem was she ended up starting to talk to the monster. So <laughs> she thought, hey, that's interesting and turn it into a movie. You but, weren't um, supposed to help her. A lot her. of the parents have done that, actually. It helps a lot. It, it must. But um, also, Kent said that, quote, I'm, I'm very fascinated by what happens to people when they don't face things and when they uh, push down on difficulties in themselves. Where does that go? So someone had a tra- tragic experience and they had to deal with it. How does it, it set in their life? Or how does it sit in their life? And I, I guess the Babadook was just an exploration of that idea told in a very heightened way. And uh, she also said that it's up to the viewer to decide if it's uh, supernatural or if it's psychological. It's supernatural because the Babadook's real, Mom. You can't <laughs> get rid you. of the Babadook. Babadook, but, um, Duk. <laughs> that being said, uh, what do we know about the box office? Oh, I'm it's glad focused. you oh, asked. Well. Funny thing about the box office is that this movie Amy? premiered in. Amy, what happened? Ah, uh, what did you do? Amy, this is serious. Ah, uh, damn it! Where is it, Amy? Where is my money? <laughs> Amy, Amy, <laughs> Amy, Amy, what do you want to do? Uh, <laughs> Doug. 
Amy and I decided that this movie came out on January 17th in 2014 at Sundance. Then it went to Australia in May of that year on, on the 22nd. And uh, well, then it came into the American box office, although most people would not have noticed, uh, on November 28th of 2014, where it opened on, guess what number? Your number mom? 44. <laughs> wow. So it is his mom. <laughs> How about number that? Four. Yeah, so it opened behind stuff like the Hunger <laughs> Was Games. Was it number five is alive? <laughs> uh, no, number five was Horrible Bosses 2. Oh. And, th- and then there was Dumb and Dumber 2, T.O. Oh. And bullshit like Big Hero 6 and Interstellar. Penguins of Madagascar was out. People were seeing a whole lot of things that weren't this. Gone Girl, Theory of Everything. The imitation game, I guess. I guess some people saw that if they hate themselves. Well, you needed something to cleanse your soul after Gone Girl, yes. Gone Girl. Talking Get about on. Gone Girl. Get I'm out gonna here, girl. my death because fuck you. <laughs> and I want to have sex with MPH. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, living the dream. <sighs> You could pick any sex, that would be the sex. (laughs) Yeah. So, what... I'm sorry, did you share the budget? Do you know what it was? Oh, yeah, it it made money. What do you Uh, you want? Yeah. Okay. (laughs) No, no. It only cost $2 million, and it made $10.3 million. Damn. Okay, that works. Yeah, no, so that's solid solid fucking profit. Like, for those big-ass bullshit Hollywood blockbusters, if you triple your money, you're a hit. And this thing made five times the money. So that's hella fucking money, son. So it's hit, hit, hit. <laughs> Those investors, they were like on a Burger King budget. And by the time that was over, they could eat it five guys. Shit was real. <laughs> yeah, yo. Five guys. <laughs> I wish I was eating it five guys. Bud Wreckers, if they're lucky. <laughs> Bud, corn shucker, real motherfucker. <laughs> So, I, I guess it's my time to share a little bit more about the movie. A little bit more? Uh, a little bit more. <laughs> oh, oh my. Oh my. <laughs> Linda knows stuff. Don't act all surprised. I'm allowed to know stuff. Yeah. <laughs> so, uh... Kent told the film journal that the Babadook is a film about a woman waking up from a long metaphorical sleep and finding that she has the power to protect herself and her son. She noted that everybody has uh, some sort of Babadook darkness to face, like uh, beyond genre and beyond being scared. That's the most important thing in the film, facing your shadow side. And um, I I know you love this, Adrian. In an interview with Uproxx, William Friedkin... (laughs) <laughs> Freaky Friedkin, <laughs> director of The Exorcist, <laughs> said that The Babadook was one of the best and scariest horror films he'd ever seen. He especially liked the emotional aspect of the film, saying, quote, It's not only the simplicity of the filmmaking and the excellence of the acting, not only by the two leads, but it's the way the film works slowly but inevitably on your emotions. I directed Bug and Rules of Engagement. And the Guardian, <laughs> and you're supposed to pretend what I say still matters. Never mind that the last time I made a good movie, it was the 80s, like the early 80s. I'm going to yeah. pre- keep pretending that I matter. I'm William Friedkin. You know my name. <laughs> this is the scariest movie I've ever seen, and I don't see scary movies. But believe me, it shook me. <laughs> like, it scared me so much, I'd call it. Freed key. <laughs> <laughs> it inspired me to go back to my film, The Exorcist. <laughs> I was uh, freed scared. I yet, no. it yet again to make more money. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> the real cut you've never ever seen. Yeah, yeah. It's like, how come this scene uh, looks like yeah. it was shot in 2019? <laughs> Shut up! I shot that in '73. It was lost. Shout oh, out to no. my cat Pazuzu. Mister <laughs> <laughs> Pazuzu gone. Oh, <laughs> but yeah, don't bother watching his um documentary on uh, a real possessed oh, person. Oh. oh yeah, not not good. 
Don't um, watch anything that William Friedkin did from The Guardian onwards. It's all shit from there. Yeah. So uh, apparently Kent had a lot of people fighting her on the ending. And um, <laughs> but she felt, and I, I totally agree, that it's the most crucial thing to keep that thing alive on some level. Um, she said, quote, I recently heard Russell Brand talk about addiction, and he was saying that it's every day. It's every day bro i'm fortunate enough not to be in that kind of place but every, every human day. being goes through that mm -hmm. on some level and that's true i mean she can't if i feel like in an american uh if this film was was made in america then it would have been all about like destroying the monster and everything is great after that you know, it really depends on how big a release it is but the modern mainstream horror is 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 all is all some shit where everybody is pretty and they have pretty problems they have pretty yeah. that's good problems. more common than the everything's all right because people are embracing more of the darkness that things are never all right but like <clears> like <throat> uh, one, 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 of, one of the one of the many many terrible more recent horror films that that I, I, I was mentally comparing this to and I compared it favorably to was was shit like haunting in Connecticut oh you know? yeah yeah which is yeah. just yet another stupid possession movie. It's like, look, 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 these vomiting magic and shit. It's like, uh, it's, a, it's a true story. It's like, yeah, one time somebody moved into a house in Connecticut. Fucking shock me. Yeah. Well, like I was saying before we started recording, the they did do a remake, just called it Come and Play. And the son in that is autistic because With that's Britta what sells. Community. And, of course, yeah, the mom is a single hot mom, and she can do everything because yeah. she don't need no help. But uh, she's not actually single, but whatever. She should be because the guy that had birthed the child to her is pretty <laughs> useless. But even that, it's Birds like... Out of his pee -pee. <clears throat> it's, see, even with that, it's like it still follows beat for beat all the shit the Babadook did. So wait, so every just, time the Australian kid says that 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 his dad died when he was going to go get born, this guy's like, my dad ejaculated and I got born later. Yeah, it's like my dad <laughs> watches a parking lot for a living. It's like, just tell him he's dead. Okay. <laughs> Hey, watching hey, people like, fucking parking lots. But people liked this versus the Baba Duke from mm -hmm. reviews I saw because the monster was killing people. It was terrifying the fuck mm -hmm. out of the friends and bullies that the kid had, and it was killing people. And because uh. I don't give a fuck about the movie, it ends with the kid going off with the creature. He's like, I want to keep my family happy because I love SpongeBob and I'm Re, so yeah. And then the mom's like, no, fuck you. You're a special child. You stay here. I'm going to sacrifice myself. So the mom heads off with the Baba Doomy, and she becomes <laughs> a ghost Doomy. that now haunts the house and dances oh. with her son. What? Wait, because, what's one of those yeah. bullshit things? Yeah. That's like, it's that's like, like a... The that's like um, the, I didn't know I was the killer the whole time ending. It's yeah. like, it's like, what do we end every horror film with? Well, we got to end it all the same way. They can't have different endings. Uh, I've been watching yeah. a lot of stuff on Shutter lately, and like you get those every now and then where it's just like really like where it's okay, but then like the ending happens and it's like, shut the fuck up, get out of here. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but um, according to Rolling Stone, the name which Kent invented is uh, you know Baba Babadok is a riff on Babaroga, the oh. Serbian name for the boogeyman. Yeah. Um, and... Uh, Serbs out there already knew that. <laughs> uh, Kent oh said, quote, I'm not a parent, but I'm surrounded by friends and family who are, and I see... <laughs> That's a parent. <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> and I see it from the outside, how parenting seems hard and never-ending. I thought the film was going to get a lot of flack for Amelia's obvious shortcomings as a mother, but oddly, I think it's given a lot of women a sense of reassurance to see a uh, real human being up there. We don't get to see characters like her that often. And I feel like that's true. And it's an important aspect of this that like, I mean, once I'm not a parent either, but I feel like it's important to, um, to have a movie to have like to portray a character, a parent as not always like, I love being a parent. I, I love my do, child. <laughs> well, you should they never are, have perfect characters, for one thing. Like, that's yeah. bullshit. Like, Commander Riker can go fuck himself. Put him in the blender. Yeah. Shit. <laughs> 
fuck that man. Fuck it. Fuck you, perfect ass next gen cast. You suck shit. Number one, take a number two. <laughs> I just, I don't. I have to argue though. I really don't think they portray them as parenting as awesome. <laughs> they do have even like in the Conjuring, the, even with the families there, they do have their moments of shut the fuck upness. <laughs> But they do it in a way where you're not actually flat out saying, well, it, shut your cunt hole of a mouth. I'm, I'm not saying that it, it never happens. I'm just saying that yeah. it seems like the majority of movies are, like, you're not allowed to um, to dislike your kids at any point. Well, the problem is that people have, like, well, the, 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 the familial and, like, emotional and relationship problems that people have in these kind of mainstream, like, pretty people movies, they're kind of like the problems in Fireproof, where you say, oh, darn, yeah. oh, shucks, like, yeah. I wish you'd be quiet right now, once in a while, and you never say, bitch, will you, will you sh- <laughs> shut your fucking cunt mouth? Like, and no, how they about never you actually eat go there. shit? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Honestly, I wish eat? more movies had balls to actually kill the fucking kids, because those days need to come back. Yeah, That's true. Yeah, yeah, the late 70s and the early 80s where literally yeah. anybody could die. There was not a yes. safe person to be they like, oh, the kids kid and the dog up. will live. It's like, and no, it's they'll be disemboweled later. Kind of funny yes. that you mentioned that because uh, she was uh, highly um, uh, influenced by like a lot of uh, Polanski films. Mm-hmm. Uh, like Polanski, like the family public horror. ones or the private ones? <laughs> oh my God. I should hope the public ones. <laughs> Um, but she also was influenced heavily by the um, like silent black and white films and that sort of heightened reality. Well, that on the on the on the TV there too, you know, like 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 mm-hmm. like she, like on the TV she like she'll be watching the commercial for one nine hundred easy. You know, the kids watching his magician DVDs. There's the silent film, and then there's the part from uh, Mario Bava's uh, Black Sabbath on there. Yes. Yeah. But uh which is available on Shutter now too. Yeah, I'm looking forward to that. And but um game. uh she's either way like it, it, there's it, it I think she's uh what what I one thing I really really enjoy is that she's a very real character in that she's like it's yeah, it's this heightened reality, but she's also very real in that like she's not she's not perfect and uh she's a gorgeous actress but they they really play that down and they make her look like disheveled and you know she hasn't fucking slept for a couple days it's like when charlie's theron had the balls to play a real person jesus christ yeah (laughs) but you're just doing that with her you're raising no. the same thing. No, because like it, it Tyra Banks had the guts to wear that fat suit. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> but anyway, um, but anyway, the for the production they used uh, the I, I guess like it was all centered around the book, and uh, for artists for the book, uh, she wanted someone who could really. Um, make it look handmade and that book's um, awesome isn't it though (laughs) it's a pop-up book yeah it's huh pop-up books were cool yeah i i i highly highly agree um and it was uh it was all centered around that book and she wanted that theme of like um of a storybook and um anyway uh so i i'm sorry i don't have the name of the <laughs> the guy oh, who did it i, they, I they did up. that book and they did like a real bang up yeah. job yeah, yeah. But, um anyway it was uh i believe that oh it's uh alexander yuhas i think i'm saying that right alexander yuhas and his ragtime band but uh, she used his work as a um, a reference point when they were trying to find a, the right artist for it. And eventually she was just like, why don't we just ask him to do it? <laughs> he was he was interested. So they went with it. But um, uh, for the uh. themes, they uh, they had sort of like a dark house and uh lighter clothes when they're in the house but uh when they're out of the house they wear dark clothes and kind of bring that darkness with them there's like a little rain cloud over them 
Yes, a metaphorical rain cloud. <laughs> Mommy, I'm with, gonna um, smash its head. Shades <laughs> Mommy, over. There's a rain in the sky. <laughs> <laughs> they went with shades uh, between black and white, and uh, different shades of blues and burgundies for the the uh, set and for the clothes. Uh, nothing, nothing like green or yellow or brown. And uh, yeah, so Alexander Holmes, excuse me, Alex Holmes was the uh, production designer. And Kent says that he was the uh, real genius behind the movie. And uh, yeah, I feel like it's. So he had a laser satellite pop some popcorn? It's my own design. But yeah, so really, I love it because it's just this, um, you know, I love the the psychological movies. I love the the movies with different layers where you can find a different story. Like an um, onion. Every time, like an onion. And uh, that's why I love it. And I think it's brilliant because, you know, she's, it's not about defeating your, your um, grief or it's defeating the, the pain. Yeah. yeah, it's living with it and sometimes it. nurturing it and accepting it. And not until she can accept it and live through it and um, sort of nurture it, can she actually fully celebrate and appreciate her son and show him that affection that he so desperately needs. Because there is a man inside me, and only when he is out can I walk free of pain. I wish there yeah. was a man inside me right now. You I know wish there was a man inside <laughs> <laughs> I hope this woman that's near death, elderly, and has dementia appreciates the movie as much as you do. <clears throat> because <laughs> Me too. I think not. <laughs> can, All right, can, what were your thoughts, Can you death rattle through the answering machine? <laughs> we need a death rattle. <laughs> no, let's get Adrian first. <laughs> Well, I'm I'm I am right in the middle of you two because you fucking basic bitches don't realize that you really don't have to have that strong opinion on what is a a solid movie. It is a solid movie. It's a good C plus. It did a lot of things right. I appreciate it more for what it was not than what it was, but I still I, mm. I, I, I did I did like the movie, but that's also because most of the movies that come out streaming from like the last ten years are just utter shit. They're all over the top. They're 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 brainless. They're you know there's 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 this fucking no new ideas. Like Donnie, you brought up come play. It's like oh look, their monster has all kinds of killings. Like it doesn't fucking matter how many killings you have if they aren't any good. You know jump scares and shit. Like ugh. the the horror genre is so badly yeah. abused because it's always undervalued. People think that horror can't be used for anything. They think it's all Texas Chainsaw Massacre knockoffs, or Friday porn. the Thirteenth knockoffs. You know, yeah, yeah, lampshaded shit with tits. You know, like 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 weak ass supernatural true story shit. Whereas the Baba Doug, yeah. you know, it 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 is it is a sweet movie that walks the line, has enough realistic elements. It is stylistic. It has it has a good aesthetic to it. There's a lot of static camera, which I like. Um, you know, the director she knew what she knew what she was doing. You know, yeah. it's nothing to scream about. It's nothing to rave yes. about. You're not gonna. <laughs> You're not going to fucking float a turd being like, oh, my God, you guys. You know, like, <laughs> now people typically overreact, especially when they find something halfway they decent. Do. Like, <laughs> like when like when Donnie Darko came out, everybody was like, oh, oh fuck my that. fucking God, you guys, <laughs> Donnie Darko. And I'm like, yeah, it was all right. And they're like, but the more they loved it, the more I was like, I'm I'm never watching that again. Yeah, yeah, I enjoyed Donnie Darko, but that was another one of those ones where you're right. Like, something somewhat different comes along, and people yeah. just kind of jizz their pants I, over I it. I was into that one just long enough, just as long as it took me to meet the fans. Because then, then I met two people yeah. who, who were like, I'm like, oh, yeah, oh, yeah, I saw Donnie Darko. It was good. They're like, no, it was fucking good. <laughs> it it changed my ever. life. <laughs> like, like it wasn't that, wasn't that good. You know? Why don't you suck a fuck? <laughs> yeah, why don't you? I just want to suck a fuck. You know? But uh, <sighs> is Jake Gyllenhaal even still around now? It's like yeah, and uh, so is uh, G- Maggie Gyllenhaal. Gyllenhaal, I know you love the Gyllenhaal. Uh, um, but anyway, <laughs> I, like like we're, uh, like Baba Duck hasn't been ruined for me the way the way that fucking uh, the way that fucking uh, 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 Donnie Darko has. But it's but it's kind of like that. It's like yeah, this is a solid this is a solid C plus. This this did a lot of things right. 
I like how not everybody's pretty and sparkly. You know, I, I like how her problems are somewhat relatable. I love how her kid walks the line between being completely annoying shithead a lot of the time, <laughs> but still yes. being kind of sweet and cute. You know, and being and and not and not being a typical kid. You know, it doesn't have to be like regular like baseball practice kid or like weeaboo kid or like full on autism kid. Because when they do autism kid in the movies now, they can't do it subtle. You know, it's like it's yeah. like no. No, what are you talking about? Those kids with the short bus, they're over the top. You can really tell. You know. Yeah. Yeah. There was some subtlety and restraint, which I respect. Again, C plus. I'm C plus on this one. That's a good grade. Yeah. Donnie. Uh, no, Donnie I, Waldio. I don't hate the movie because of the director. I didn't hate it because of the kid, even though the kid I really wanted them to die at some points. Yeah. It's, or the fact the monster <laughs> wasn't a monster and was just a fucking metaphor. I just I hated What's the a hype metaphor? built <laughs> around. Uh, it. Stupid. I hated the <laughs> hype around the film, and because mm. of its subject matter, that somehow because it deals with this and it's all a fucking metaphor for depression and mental illness, that somehow it immediately elevates its status over what it was. Like you said, it's a solid C grade film. It's the same thing that happens to like THX 1138. People are like, oh my God, it's the most amazing fucking oh. sci-fi film. It is a boring snooze fest. You can't even jerk off while watching that film. You're just like, uh, why? Did you it's try just, though? <laughs> I did several times. But it's the thing, And again, though, I like THX 1138 a damn sight more than I like the rest of George Lucas' yeah. career. <laughs> but it's like you also have in the whole thing of how Tumblr made a joke about let's make him the fucking icon for the LGBTQ. So then you have all these people from that going, oh my god, this is so amazing. We have to make this something cool. And then they go see the film and like, why the fuck is he our mascot? He's not fucking gay. It's nothing to do with that at all. It's like, wait, oh, it's well, just there's Tumblrinas. Like, no, okay, they don't need it to got, see it. It got so taken seriously that fucking, I think it was Shout Factory put out a special pride version of the fucking film that has a <laughs> rainbow cover on it. And I'm like, you know, I thought it was bad enough when we had like 10 versions of fucking Army yes. of Darkness coming out and the same fucking cuts with different names and packaging for a year. But holy fuck me in the asshole. What were you doing and what were you thinking with this? But it's because people are elevating the fuck out of this movie that's just so mediocre. It's just, and there are other movies that do what she was doing. It's not revolutionary, and they did it better in some instances, and they got away with it and made a lot more money. I just didn't like that so many people hyped this as being either the scariest thing they've ever seen, the most original thing they've ever seen, or it's just amazing because well, it deals with mental illness. Johnny, it was just um, meh. Real talk, they might not have seen that many movies. And at the same time, it's when did they get told this was about mental illness? After the fact, because you said the director says she's leaving it up to people to interpret what this is, or is it just people sniffing their own shit? If this was something you were told beforehand, because you had said yeah. when we were talking before this that you immediately got it because it's just like, boom, you're there, and that's why you loved yeah. it. But I still, even based off of that, I don't see without even any of that to do with it, just the film itself, no messages, no onion layers, how it is elevated to the status of amazingly awesome and brilliant because it just doesn't carry that weight behind it. It's an experience that once you're over with, if you liked it, cool, that's good for you. If you want to revisit it, I guess. It just doesn't strike me as one of those films that you want to keep re-watching. It's something that you'll have and then go, oh yeah, that's right, I have that. I haven't seen that in a couple of years. I'll pop it in. But it just doesn't have to me like the longevity that people seem to be giving to it because they elevate that status so highly. It's like if anything, if you ever don't play the game, but Overwatch. Overwatch <sighs> is a PvP game where all you do is kill the other people, be the last person standing or the last team standing. Tumblr has a fucking arcane. It's porn. Yes, not only porn, but like libraries full of backstory on all these uh, characters on which characters are gay which ones are straight which ones are asexual they, they just have did so that because they like tracers butt crack yeah it's like they have so much of this shit but you're like wow this sounds like a really amazing game i gotta check it out there's no fucking story in this game everything that made it popular is from so the much people the that started implying all these things are shipping characters so it's like good on you for loving the thing 
But when people hear this and hear how stoked they are about the game and they see all the artwork and shit, they're expecting to see that story. They're expecting to see all this built up hype in that. But when they get in there, there's nothing. It's like even our cousin Jenny bought into that. She was like, oh my God, I really want to play this game because everyone's all about it. And she tried it. She's like, this game is boring. It's like, eh. Well, you know, we, 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 happens, we, though, but. the state of filmmaking now is like people will project anything out of desperation because there's nothing. Yeah. They, they'll even pretend that Christopher Nolan movies mean something. And exactly. Well, Christopher Nolan even thinks the movies mean something. He wanted yeah, you to die during the pandemic shit. to see his movie in a theater. Well, <laughs> I'm not like I, I. I love the movie. I think it's brilliant. But I, I I can see where you're coming from. But I'm not. I'm not claiming like it's the greatest movie of all time. But you did and say it was brilliant. That's why I'm asking. No, like, how, no, how I do. do. You get that? I honestly feel like it's it's brilliant because it's. I mean, but we're never going to feel the same way because you don't, you don't have the same taste as I do. And that's fine. That's why I'm saying, I'm just trying to get your mindset on this. Like what to you makes it brilliant is what I'm trying to say. Well, I'm not um, trying to pick you apart and like punch your face off. No, no, I your fucking problem. (laughs) No. And I get that. And I'm, I'm just saying that like, you know, I agree with that. Like we, we have different tastes and we're going to have different definitions of, of what is brilliant. But for me, (laughs) um, I mean, it's not like the greatest movie of all time, of all time, but, um, I, I love it because it's such, um, a deep story that really, like if, if you've experienced grief, if you're a parent Uh, or, or know any kids, like it can, uh, if you like that sort of movie, it can really, um, like I, I love the movies that help you experience yeah. somebody else's perspective and different yeah. emotions. Life, and life is a house. Yes, exactly. <laughs> I mean, I just I, I like that like kind home. of jumping into somebody else's life and perspective uh yeah. idea. And we're also so I really not enjoyed it. The territory of you like it because it's something you can relate into. And again, that's what I was saying, like, mm. without getting into the layers of the film, just the story as is, is presented to you. It's like, how is it brilliant to you? Like, why do you love it is what I'm trying to get at. Because if that's, if what you're saying is why you love it, then that's mm-hmm. cool. It's awesome. But well, because for me personally, together. like I've, my whole life, I mean, you know me, I've, ha- I've have a problem of well, facing we- my emotions and I've always tried to just ignore them. And tamp them down, and then they come up as like a an anxiety attack or whatever. And uh, you know, I'm I'm okay now with saying that I've been seeing a therapist just to to yeah, help me yeah. with that. And you know, with our dad passing, like I started yeah. seeing a therapist because I don't know how to grieve. And I feel like this movie is really about that, about like, well you know, people like me who don't really know how to face their emotions and how to process them. Like what happens when that's like, you keep doing that when you really should be letting it out and uh, expressing it, living with it, accepting it. Yeah. And, uh, you know, what can happen to the people around you. Adrian, you're trying to chime in something. You're like holding on with bated breath. Uh but, but most importantly is you get to see a kid slammed up against the wall by an invisible monster. Well, there's and you that get to see too, the yes. mom strangle and break the dog's neck. Yeah. Yeah. Hmm. Yeah. I and they've like got that. the neighbor lady. It's like, oh, you know, your child's so perceptive. You know, you know that there's invisible monsters. I see invisible monsters all the time, dear. She oh. has Parkinson's, <laughs> but just a little bit. It's just, it's just a slight pocket. Like Paul Williams said, he's done a lot of drugs through his life. So when the people from the fucking, oh God, I just forgot their name. Oh, the no. uh, random access memory guys. Oh, God, what, what? You, know, you know who I'm talking about. They just recently broke up. The electric group, you guys. You Random access memories. You don't know these people random around access. the world. Oh, no. uh, they did the soundtrack to Tron Legacy. <laughs> Wait. Oh my God. They wear robot heads on yeah, their head. Yeah, yeah, Daft oh, Punk. Oh, Daft Punk. Daft Punk. He's like, yes, I've done drugs all through my life, so you can imagine what I thought when I saw these two guys appear in front of my house. That's <laughs> like, you're funny, Paul Williams, and alive. <laughs> yes, uh, I was going to say, he's still alive. 
Paul Williams and I are probably <laughs> rocking out to the same stuff. So I'm like, who's a punk now? That's what they call you in jail when they make you do the duty. Oh, <laughs> hey, you ever had your shit pushed in, son? <laughs> 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 You're going on a trip. I saw you there last night. That's Fucking what we call the fucking ass. Um, But uh, while we were still talking about the uh, about him becoming an icon for the LGBTQ community, there we're are two so different. Um, well, there. I, I just got to say, there were two different uh, theories on the origins for that. Um, so apparently, a lot of people thought that Netflix accidentally listed the Babadook as the LGBTQ movie. Netflix but, have an accident never. Yeah. <laughs> but I know, right? But, oh, original um, content. <clears throat> I've also heard that I uh, read that the um, that uh, it was a Tumblr account, I believe, that was just saying as a joke to piss people off that were like very, uh, I guess, like homophobic, saying that uh, that <laughs> the Babadook is gay <laughs> and he's out and he's proud. The Tumblr and was born to apparently piss me off. Some- I was going to say, were, yeah. Some people were being dicks. I mean, I'm like, you're, fuck you, he's not gay. And he's saying, no, really. He's, and uh, some guy... Re- Bob, re- dude's a like, ladies' man. You shut the fuck up. Yeah, right. He gets all the poo. He gets all the pussy. It's falling out of his pocket. <laughs> Adrian, are you, a, are you a Tumblr vet like me also? I was... Uh, yeah, I went on Tumblr. Yeah. I went on Tumblr in, in uh, like, 2016. And I really wish that yeah. I didn't because... God, I agree. <laughs> look, 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 look. I'm, 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 I am a pretty pro- fairly progressive person. I think, you know, I'm a gay person. I love, you know, art and shit, you know, and I love at the time you can see lots of naked shit on there. It seemed like a great idea. And then immediately everybody's all like, oh my God, cancel, cancel. And I'm like, what the yeah. fuck? I thought we were just here to be on the internet and have a good time. You guys, what the fuck? It's like, no, cancel be hard. Naked. And they're all well, like, 2016 yeah. Ghostbusters is the greatest movie ever. And if you hate it, you're just a hateful <laughs> man. Like, exactly. what the fuck? Why? No. God damn, you were all so wrong. Yeah, it's no, like, it I used, to be, it used to be because, I, if, as far as I remember back, it's like DeviantArt used to be the place until that got filled with trolls and bullshit. So then people are like, okay, we want to share our shit on Tumblr. But then it just got to where it is. Yeah. And yeah, there are people love to do the whole, I'm going to ship these people with that person. And then another fandom says, you can't do that because that person's not gay. It's Your like, fuck you, they are for me. Head. And then people go, I'm going to do this because it makes me upset. And then that's when other people come in like, you know what? I don't care if they're gay or not. It's fucking fiction. Do what you want. It's like, okay, it's official. And then people get pissed and go, ah, ah, dicks and pussies, not dicks and dicks. They shipped, <laughs> they shipped fucking One Direction. And then there was an, yeah. a, an official One Direction gay fanfic that came out. Yeah. And I don't know if the One Direction guys were actually consulted or not, but it was official. <laughs> Do I care what they think of people making gay porn of them? Not really, but I think no. that's... <laughs> they have daily lives. <laughs> Yeah, it's like you know, some of those guys probably have kids. I don't know. I don't know of anything. I don't know of anything that matters. Fuck, them. I don't, fuck, I don't fuck know. One Direction, you know. One so D. Apparently, they all uh, care. It was one person that was kind of feeding into that who created the screenshot of uh, Netflix having him, yeah. <laughs> having the Babadook listed. But I fucking love it. If you ever look up the uh, Babadook Pride, it's, it's pretty fucking amazing. He's here. He's got the hot look. He's Bob Duck. So it's like Herman oh. Melville. There's so many gay layers in there. You just gotta look for the gay layers. <laughs> like yeah. the big ass dick. Melville, um, big faggot. <laughs> Allegedly. Adrian's. Uh, I just let need to I'd let everybody know it's okay for Adrian to use that word, uh, <laughs> not <no>. for us. <laughs> uh, like we can only can use, use that, that word, word when calling him, especially in traffic. <laughs> so any who's uh donnie were you able to find any reviews donnie's reviews fuck yeah. my life okay so yes yes i found a few i even got more we have the mother was sleep deprived and they both needed therapy to work out their unresolved issues with dad dying. This was not scary. It's just sad. 
and tragic to see two such broken, oblivious souls so screwed up and they don't even know it. Awful movie. Just went on and on. Couldn't wait for it to be over. So dull, I threw the DVD in the trash, lest anyone else waste two hours of his or her life watching it. Fundamentally, a movie about a single mom's dysfunctional relationship with her young son, y'all. <laughs> oh, okay, let's, let's be real. I think I think most Americans saw this movie the first time streaming. Do you think they ordered the physical copy and threw it away just so they could say that they did? Well, I mean, I did say, tell y'all. people to break apart a uh, Nicolas Cage film instead of you know returning it. So which one? I thought there were many. There were a Most few. of them. Yeah. <laughs> Most of them. <laughs> I'm filled with rage and I've got a score to settle. Because oh, I'm very insult. <laughs> An <laughs> incoherent <laughs> story with a wondering plot, awful editing, and lots of screaming from both the boy and his mother. Don't waste your time. I kind of love that scene where you want to kill the kid. Wait, <laughs> <laughs> Why can't, can't you be normal? Honestly, ah! <laughs> Honestly, the only part of this movie I can relate to, since that's what we're trying to do, is when the kid is getting hassled by the bitch during her birthday. He's like, oh. why are you in my treehouse? It's my treehouse. Like, I ain't hurt nobody. I can't Y'all believe we haven't talked about you. that. That like yeah, well, we yeah, spent it's, about it's, fifty minutes yodeling on. So his we cousin didn't get is in a little about. pink dress, and she has a little tiara on, and she's in the tree. It's like, yeah, that's a my tree house. She it's came my to day. Party at her I'm party. a princess. <laughs> she said, I'm not hurting anybody. <laughs> yeah, I think I would have appreciated it more if it was like Problem Child, where she's like crying at her party, and it's playing that song. You know, it's my party. I can cry if I want to. But the boys with like the Babadook and they're fucking up all the presents and the guests. Like the Babadook is just eating random kids and ripping their heads off. And the kid is like pissing on her pile of presents. And the did parents you are like, want oh the, my God. Did you want the Babadook to be played by Howie Mandel? <laughs> yeah. Yes, I did. <laughs> okay. Well, like, okay. So Ruby, the little girl, her uh, Amelia's uh, niece and Sam's cousin, um, he's over at her birthday party and she and her mom don't want him there because they don't like him. And, uh, Ruby is a little cunt and <laughs> so is her mother. And I was, uh, I, I know I'm a terrible person, but I actually cheered when he pushed her out of the tree house I was like, oh, yes. because she tells him you're not even good enough to have a dad. Your dad died, so he didn't have to be with you. <laughs> this is not wrong. <laughs> you suck. Dad you eat suck. it out of there. <laughs> you don't uh, even look good while you're sucking. You're terrible. I hate you. <laughs> if I had a dime for every time I've heard of that in the back alley. <laughs> <laughs> then she throws a, a dollar bill on him and says, Clean yourself up. This is just what you're worth. <laughs> <laughs> now pick it up. <laughs> a little unrelated, but I also have a, a a theory that she that Amelia wrote the book. I know because she yeah. she says like at one point with the mothers at that party, she says that she was an she used to be an author and that she wrote children's books. And uh, when she goes into and the now she goes to birthday parties and suffers cunts. <laughs> yeah. yeah, and she goes to the the police department to say that somebody keeps putting this book in her her house and it's creepy and she's got charcoal all over her hands which you assume that it's because she was she set fire to it i really like that scene the police station yes but also it could just be that like because she was fucking drawing it and she's like with charcoal like shading it in i don't know i think she i just say this is the same as beyond the door 2 aka shock by mario bava oh god I actually thought you were going to say Beyond the Sh- Valley of the Shadow of the Dolls, but <laughs> the village well, of the Dolls. But... I'm, I'm, yes, I'm, I'm doing my else. exercises, mother. <laughs> Russ Meyer came up with some of the best titles ever. I mean, like, Beneath the Valley of the Ultra Vixens. That's just the best fucking title, man. Speaking of best title... Mm-hmm. <laughs> Oh, 
doctors of script. Ooh. Adrian? Oh, uh, I'm glad you asked. <laughs> I propose the Babadook, part duke. <laughs> it's been a few years since the events of the Babadook, and a mysterious book has made it into the lives of some troubled teens. Little do they know that when you read from the book, you summon the duke. <laughs> Can they deal with their emotional traumas? And each one of them has like a specific emotional trauma. Can they possibly get rid of the Babadook? <laughs> Uh, from the director of Annabelle Creation, starring the cast of the illustrious Wish Upon. See it in theaters or streaming. <laughs> this isn't the sequel we deserve, but this is the one that we would get if anybody is able to license the title. I'm looking at you, Lionsgate. That would be amazing, but I'm a horrible fucking human being. When you said uh, troubled kids find the book. I'm like, so what do they do? Open it and start jerking off on the book. <laughs> oh, that'd be Harmony Corinne's uh, Babadook part duck. <laughs> covered in jizz. <laughs> there'd be a character called Ball. There'd be a guy with no legs. Yeah. <laughs> no news to you. Oh, no God. news. And that one, it's the like monster. Ronnie McDowell going to come out dressed as Caesar or some shit and just like start pissing on the book? <laughs> <laughs> oh god <laughs> Caligula is a great film <laughs> oh, yeah. in the name of Senate the people of Rome, the people of Rome. <laughs> oh oh god the train wrecks. uh yeah uh, I had to redo mine because something else sounded better I guess huh. but not really uh it's been five years since the Babadook came into the lives of Amelia and Samuel. They are now living full, productive lives, contributing to society. Normal American family, you might say. But the Babadook, for the first time in a long time, was left alone to find himself and what was wrong with the Duke. The family pushed for them to try learning, becoming a part of the world around them. So they did. They began taking online courses in accounting, and within a year's time, a record no less, they were licensed and began working for a local firm of Goldstein and Starch. Baba was finding a place in the cogs of the working machine that is life. They even found a love interest. Things were looking good. Until they weren't. <laughs> The Babadook's lover was diagnosed with brain cancer and three types of hepatitis. The accounting insurance wouldn't cover his medical expenses, and Amelia could do very little to help the Duke Duke. So the Baba Duke did the only reasonable thing they could think of. They began growing pot for high school kids, whom the Baba Duke would then eat. But a success came rolling in, as did his success came rolling in, so did the DEA. Are you with turning nothing this to into lose, weeds? <laughs> with nothing to lose and everything to gain, the Babadook must outrace the authorities, outwit the angry parents of the devoured children, and make his medical bill payments on time. It's a heartwarming, edge-of-your-seat thrill ride from TriStar Pictures. Go see the Babadook in Babakush. God damn it. <laughs> well, it was either that or the Baba Ganoush love story. And I think this has a little more value. <laughs> <clears throat> oh, yeah, it's way more relatable. Breaking. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> um, for mine, it's going to be a mix between. Um, Bob well, actually, Babadook is going to be on boat trip. Oh God! <laughs> oh Cuba God! Jr. <laughs> oh Rachel God! Sands. And Babadook is going to teach Cuba Gooding how that to um how to properly accept his emotions <laughs> and, oh. and uh, come out, if you will, and to accept himself and be who he truly <sighs> wants to be. <laughs> There's so many great movies out there with the gay subtext in them, and this just isn't one of them. Baba yeah, it's no in and out. <laughs> <laughs> Why is everybody gay? Subtext, <laughs> goddamn you! Oh, Greg I assure Hurley. you, he was a sub. <laughs> <laughs> 
Oh. Well, Cobra Gooding Jr. on Boat Trip is what you would call a power bottom. <laughs> <laughs> Remember when, oh. when Cobra Gooding Jr. was on that show and he played O.J. Simpson? <laughs> oh, Jesus. Yes, everybody, Boat Trip was a real fucking movie. Of course it was. Yeah, it had Roger is. Moore in it. Yes, it did. Oh, God. Oh, that fucking movie. Anyway. Yeah. Why did you remind us that it exists? <laughs> That's what I'm here for. You're welcome. Hey guys, oh. remember Geely? Oh, oh God. God. Let's go back in time. When Ben Affleck called a kid a retard. <laughs> oh God. Oh. Unscripted. Uh, so, uh, shall we talk about the lessons of the movie? What we learned? <gasps> I think you should have taken a shit in the book to see how he would have reacted. I know I've pissed and jerked off and now shit in the book, but I just really want to know how the Boba Duke would have taken that. You don't understand. What you do <laughs> to the book happens in real life, Batman. <laughs> I'm a drunk on my book. <laughs> I'm a drunk on book. <laughs> Playtime over, Duke, Duke, Duke. Like maybe the Boba Duke would just bring you a toilet. Like you hear it being scraped across the floor to your bedroom. Like, <laughs> I'm a Duke. What were you born in a barn? Why <laughs> you put my book in a jar oh god no seriously <laughs> who does that <laughs> what's wrong with you <laughs> let me out of this house <laughs> baba what the fuck <laughs> oh, no, <laughs> she turns it into a happy scrapbook oh my god what if they did get rid of his book and he came into the digital age like they did in the ring where they got rid of the videotape and just made it something on the web could he be like the baba man? nuke <laughs> No, yeah, no, it's the end of the ring. They got to copy it or to save it, so they yes. sell it on Etsy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, look, it, honey, came with the handcrafted card. <laughs> it says it really need calligraphy. It says it's your problem now. <laughs> Should I be troubled that this is a scratch and sniff Baba Duke book? <laughs> <laughs> Why does the, the monitor feel sticky? <laughs> Baba Duke says, take your clothes off. Look, look. Duke. It's like, lick Duke. this page. Duke, Duke. <laughs> I don't like this book in my house. Uh, I Adrian, don't know what did you... was of that. Did, uh, I, did I learn stuff? Yeah, I, I learned that it's Mister for one thing. You, know, you gotta, you gotta. Yes, you gotta I am. <laughs> uh, um, he didn't go to college for ten years to be called just Baba Duke, <laughs> Doctor Duck. Uh, be careful <laughs> which uh, which DVDs that you buy for your kid. Um, He's got a degree yeah. in being a duck. <laughs> Otherwise, your kid will put on people. some Femi Magic show. Um, oh, maybe lock the basement a little bit better. Yeah. That was a fucked up basement for that house. I guess it used to be a sex dungeon. Ladies and gentlemen, life's very more <laughs> mysterious than it seems. <laughs> oh, fuck you. Um, <laughs> mine is a, more of a PSA to parents nothing out there. Nothing in my hands. Nothing in my hands. <laughs> Your hands are vanishing. <laughs> <laughs> oh, oh, oh. <laughs> So my PSA to parents uh, based on this movie is parents, if your children are bringing or a child is bringing weapons to school and not really sleeping because they're up all night creating weapons to Shoot kill the them. monsters, maybe you should get them some help. <laughs> like, there's what, nothing what, wrong what, with getting my day, We took weapons to school all the time and it didn't hurt us none. I'd bring a hand grenade to show and tell and pull the damn pin. That's what I do. We're yeah, recording no, this in May, this. which also <laughs> happens to be Mental Health Awareness Month. So. And that's why it's my birthday. <laughs> <laughs> that is exciting. No, it doesn't stand for that. M-A-Y. Mental Awareness. Y'all's. That's what it stands for. Yo, yep. yo, yo. <laughs> <laughs> what up, cuz? 
you guys have anything to add? <laughs> Baba duck, duck, duck. Duck, duck, duck. <laughs> All right, everybody, do the dance. Baba, 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 duck, duck, duck. No. Baba, 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 <laughs> duck, 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 duck. Just the Donnie now. <laughs> Oh, I did my Baba Duke of Earl and Duke of Darkness, so fuck you. Aw, sucky sucky. Jerky. Oh, god damn it. Then, in that case, I suppose it's time for me to say please, please, please. Listen, follow, rate, and review Video Rama on Apple Podcasts and over on uh, Podchaser, especially Apple Podcasts because it helps other people find us. And, you know, we're just starting with this show. So please, please, please. And it will earn you a, a live on air shout out if you review us on Apple Podcasts. Uh, and check out our stuff on YouTube. Uh, also, check you, over on YouTube, you can see our beautiful faces. But they can see them here. <laughs> That's what I'm saying. <laughs> they can't. They can't see our what beautiful faces sake. on Spotify. Let the boy sleep in your bed. <laughs> <laughs> if the boy wants to cuddle, then you cuddle. God damn it! Who also, check out our cuddle? our Patreon at patreon.com forward slash video rama pod. That, of course, is V I D E O R A M A P O D. Uh, remember, you can find Video Rama on uh, these social medias, especially especially on Twitter at Video Rama P. Uh, you can visit our, <laughs> and that's not P E E; it's the letter P. It sounds like um, urine. <laughs> you can, <laughs> once I finally get it up, you can check out our website <laughs> at uh, VideoRamaPod.com. And uh, you can always write to us at videoramapod at gmail.com. Uh, check out my other podcast about witches in history. And sometimes we also cover uh, heroic animals and just plain awesome animals. Uh, it's called Bed Knobs and Broom Flicks. That's B-R-O-O-M-F-L-I-C-K-S. You know we're good because we got licks at the end. <laughs> uh, also... <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> Check me out, and there's uh, some other show called Cage's Fist or something like that <laughs> where you could see a saw. Uh, Adrian, where can the people find you? Oh, I don't okay, know. Okay, I'm wearing oh. the sweater. Oh. Yeah, booby buddies. What happened? <laughs> oh. Yeah, no, uh, I, oh. I'm Adrian, and you can find me on deviantart.com under Leo the Fox, all lowercase, all one word, L E O T H E F O X. I have like fucking 3,000 artworks and stories on there, and you could oh. endure those in some form. Don't bite That's it good. off all at once, it'll just hurt you. Um, and I'm on Patreon under the same thing. I'd sure like some money. I'm not getting paid all that much these days. More on that later. Uh, and, uh, I'm on YouTube under AA Smith and I definitely post videos on there and I'm definitely not slacking about posting videos there. That would never happen. Uh, <laughs> give me money. Yeah. The streets are hard, especially work in the streets are hard right now in pandemic <laughs> times. So. Yeah, Adrian can use your help. <laughs> Girl, these shoes. <laughs> Man's got to work. <laughs> Man's got to eat. eat, Mr. Lee. I, I just need enough for a shook up Diet Coke between clients. That's all. <laughs> a warm shook up Diet Coke. Oh, yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> oh, I should mention if you become a Patreon on uh, Video Rama Pod, uh, at a certain level, you could even uh, make a suggestion for a movie or a theme. And uh, at a certain level, you can also be a guest. So check it out. It's awesome. And uh, at the lower levels, you get stickers and shit. So assuming Hello, that I ever get them made. Yeah. Come and play with us. <laughs> well, Forever. you can find me on top of Adrian's grandma, because that's how <laughs> I roll, son. <laughs> She's friendly. Uh, uh, which one? Also... I have two. <laughs> two living grandmas. Two. Well, I know. The other one's concerned about you. We talked about it last night. <laughs> I am also on Unreal Goals, the Twitter handle. I'm also still Garla Twi'lek on Instagram. Unreal Goals, the Kitty Cat Face Man over on YouTube's. And yeah, aside being outside by Arby's, I'll be fucking your moms tonight. And having two live grandmas is a weird brag, Adrian. <laughs> yeah, yeah well, when Ford, I had a great grandma too, but she's with God now. <laughs> She's with the duck. <laughs> Take a look, look. <laughs> I'm down to one grandpa, though. 
That ain't my fault. Anyway, so... <laughs> <laughs> Adrian. I didn't hurt nobody. <laughs> Donnie didn't hurt nobody. <laughs> Adrian, do you have a referral for the decrepit old woman? I do <laughs> have a selection for the old woman the and it's by woman. a lady with clothes on and everything. <laughs> oh. I'll tell you all about it. It's huh? but <clears throat> <laughs> Wait, are we doing a freeze frame? I am. 